Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks, wherever you are across the globe. Um, welcome to a second edition of uh, Vlog, and we're going to be focusing on distributed services engine, doing a little bit of deep dive. I have uh, our uh, in-house technical expert, Dave Moreira, who is going to walk us through some of the finer details and technical aspects of distributed services engine. Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, Raghav, nice seeing you again. Thanks for joining, Dave. Dave, um, so the last uh, Vlog series, on, Vlog video on distributed services engine, we talked at a very high level about what distributed services engine is, how VMware is bringing this concept to market, and how we're partnering with our uh, OEM vendors and our silicon vendors. Um, would like to talk a little bit more about the technical aspects of the solution. Um, would you mind walking us through, when we talk about a distributed services engine solution, what are the different components of the solution? Okay, yeah, great. Um, yeah, technical speak, speaking, there's a few components, right? Obviously, number one would be the data processing unit. But that's not to say that you can go out to a store and just get a DPU and plug it into your server and then move on, right? It, it will be nice, but there's a lot more that is happening on the back end on the actual hardware. So first you need a DPU, which is great. So we, we're partnering with um, NVIDIA, AMD, Pensando, and other partners as well to have these CPUs working with our software. And that is the next step, which is obviously having vSphere 8, right? So we need vSphere 8 DPUs, but more importantly, we need to put the DPU somewhere, and that will be the actual server. So we're working with OEMs, vendors like Dell, uh, Lenovo, HPE, where we install the DPUs, and on top of that, install ESXi, right? But there's a lot going on also on the hardware side. It's not just that card that we plug in. There's different connections between the DPU, a daughter card that we call, or iDRAC, BMC, that card, and that card connects to the DPU. And that's how the actual host, the ESXi host, looks and talks to the DPU in a different path, not to the PCIe bus. So that's those are the main components. Our software, uh, we have vSphere, DPUs and a server compatible for DPUs. Got you. Um, Dave, I'm curious, what is vSphere's role? What is vSphere's central role uh, in this solution? So vSphere has a very important role with DPUs, right? Um, not only on the actual server, which is going to be able to run your workloads, run vCenter, talk to vCenter, but also to be able to, uh, it's going to be installed within the DPU as well. And that is going to open up a lot of capabilities within the actual DPU. Not only that, but we're taking that a step further where we're leveraging our own tools like VS, uh, VLCM to not only install uh, vSphere and SX, but also we're using that to upgrade the actual DPU, the ESXi within the DPU, right? So we're making that super easy for our customers to keep DPUs up to date as, as well as their servers in one shot. I got you. Uh, so there is uh, a reduced set of functionality from vSphere 8 that runs on the DPU, which provides these functionalities uh, when it comes to lifecycle management and offloading. Um, yep. Let's talk a little bit about what specifically are we offloading in vSphere 8? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question because a lot of people get confused, right? It, we're, we're talking about offloading services and in this first phase, we're offloading network services, which is great. Um, so we're not using the deep, uh, CPUs from the x86 server. We're actually taking that down and we utilize and leveraging those CPU resources from the DPU. But we're also offloading network traffic to the DPU. So you may be thinking, hey, I can do that with performance SNCC right now. Uh, yes, you can. But the DPU actually has a CPU and a um, com um, compatible accelerator, a network accelerator that it can actually be uh, programmable, right? So it, that is the main difference between the DPU and a performance NIC. And now the CPU within the DPU is gonna talk to the accelerator and that is where all the magic's happening because now we're hitting the accelerator first. If we can see the traffic being in the cache, then we can go out and talk to the CPU and that it's gonna quickly find us a way to get out there and you know, move these network packets around. And that those, those two being next to each other talking constantly is going to enhance performance and you know, definitely alleviate and take those resources back from 
x86 down to the DPU and giving those resources back to the workloads. Dave, is the entire NSX stack offloaded or, or are there portions of NSX stack that run today? So today we're, we're starting with uh, layer two, layer three, overlay segments, VLAN segments. Um, the through firewall is in beta right now in version 8.0, uh, but that will be coming soon. So those are things that we're starting with. And obviously as we expand, as time goes on, that is going to, uh, more will be uh, available for our customers. So customers can deploy NSX networking in production today, but when it comes to uh, distributed uh, firewall capability, it's in beta, but customers can still um, build proof of concepts and they, they can play around with this feature. It's just not recommended for production, but it's available. Right, absolutely. And that doesn't mean they can't use it for production. It just won't be offloaded to the DPU. Uh, gotcha. So we still use some resources from x86 CPU, but the rest, the overlays and layer two, layer three will be offloaded to the DPU. Uh, okay. So it still works the same way, right? In a sex, but the magic happens because vSphere can't tell you know, which resources from NSX we can leverage and offload to the DPU. So I heard you mention uh, L2, L3, uh, overlay segments, VLAN segments, all of these functionalities are accelerated on the, the DPU, the card. Um, so what are the benefits of doing offload and accelerate of these functions on the uh, DPU? Yeah, so the, the, main, the main benefit is the CPU resources being um, given back to that host CPU, right? The x86. So by doing that, we're allowing, um, we're taking away that extra uh, charge, extra, um, you know, uh, resource consumption from the VMs that don't, or from NSX service in this case, and we're mm -hmm. giving that back to the workloads. So now the workloads have more capability to expand. You can add more VMs, et cetera. Then the other benefit is being able to um, just have a better packet throughput Right, because now we can utilize those same x86 CPUs and because the workloads are utilizing that, so we get better throughput and lower latency as well. So, you know, better performance on the applications and we are offloading all those services um, or the CPU load on those DPU CPUs. Gotcha. So uh, higher workload consolidation because we're freeing up the CPU cycles and better infrastructure performance because we're operating the network at line speed with better packet throughput and better latency. Sounds like great benefits to me. Um, yep. Dave, are we going to stop with NSX networking or do we have uh, plans for future roadmap items that we can talk about? Um, absolutely. This is just the beginning. And uh, so one key point here is to think about how we started with GPUs back in the day, right? There was only a small use, a set of use cases. With DPUs and with GPUs back then, we would start expanding using that for AIML. And DPUs, I can see that being the same way, right? We're starting with a smaller use case, and then we're going to grow into, for example, security, right? Extending that to storage, such as vSAN, using our own product and being able to offload some of those services down. But there will, could be a lot more use cases for a lot of our customers. And once we find that we can really leverage those DPUs and GPUs um, to actually speed up the entire environment and the workloads. Awesome. Those sound like great benefits. Um, Dave, we talked a lot about the benefits, about what can be accelerated. Um, I still think that uh, we could probably get into the details of the user experience, maybe not on this show, but maybe perhaps on a future show where we can walk our customers through the user experience and see how seamless it is to incorporate DPUs into their virtual infrastructure. Are you up for that in the future? Absolutely. I'll be, I'll be glad to show our customers what it looks like and how easy it is to start with DPUs. On this I'm, I'm going to take you up on that offer and in, an, in a future vlog series, we're going to come back and talk about the user experience and give a flavor of what the, uh, what the user interface looks like when it comes to adopting DPU and how VMware vSphere makes it a breeze to adopt DPUs into the virtual infrastructure. But that day, I really want to appreciate for taking the time to walk us through some of the technical aspects of the distributed services engine solution. And we'll see you on another edition of Vlog. Yep. Thanks, Raghav. See you. Thank you. Bye.